Hello and welcome to O2 Inside Line Live. I'm Hugo Munner. I'm being joined by Red Roses legend Rachel Buffett. <laughs> Rachel, as ever, it's great to see you. How are you getting on? All right. Yeah, really good. Thanks, Hugo. It's great to be here. Really pumped for today. I can't wait for the game to get going. Should we have a look at you in action for England, carving it up, doing what you do best? Oh, yeah. What you got? Go on then. To Buffett. An amazing little run. Danny McLean for Burford! Hunter, off oh, road to Burford. Someone like Rachel Burford would always burn your shoulder. Words. Good, aren't you? Oh, well, it looks like Kate and Daley McLean was making me look good on that. <laughs> <laughs> you still got to finish him. You still exactly. got to finish him. As Rachel's alluded to, we have a magnificent day ahead for you guys and girls at home. We've got the Red Roses in action against France in round two of Le Crunch. And following that, we've got England taking on Ireland. And of course, you can keep up to date with everything that's going on right across England, England rugby's uh, social media channels. Rachel, um, let's start the Red Roses, they're out on the pitch starting to warm up, getting themselves primed for what should be a brilliant challenge. Um, Simon Middleton, he named his squad earlier on this week. Shall we have a look at it? And I'd like you to tell me who the key personnel are who are taking part today. Yeah, I think, you know, Simon Middleton's had a great opportunity to rotate his squad and have a look at some players coming in. And for me today, I think we've got to have a look at Langley Tuima at 13. Yeah. She's got X Factor about her playing at Club Rivera at the moment. She's got Fijian flair. That She does the type of things that you don't expect. So I really hope that she brings her club form into, into the game today. But also Alex Matthews. She's yeah. been a force since coming back from the seven scene. Um, and it's like she's never been away. So she's definitely a player to be watching out for as well. Someone who didn't get a chance to go to Grenoble last week was Katie Dana McLean. Is she the type of person to take not being in the squad all, all that well? <laughs> uh, well, she does get a little bit upset when things <laughs> don't go her way. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, she was bitterly disappointed to not go out and to Grenoble and be a part of the squad. But, you know, today she takes the captain arm bag, she's straight back in. And, you know, that, that kind of sulkiness behaviour that she does have, and she knows she has it, just comes from complete passion and being highly competitive. So, really excited. I did message her this morning, say, how are you feeling? She's like, I'm feeling nervous. But the calmness is coming in now, and, and like I can't wait to see her kind of drive the troops around today. It's amazing someone like her, who's the third most capped England player of all time, still in, still having those yeah. match day nerves. Um, I guess nerves show that you really care. But with her as well this season, she's gone up to sale. She's also a coach. I mean, how important is it having someone of her intellect, of her experience, but also coaching ability to be able to um, marshal exactly what goes on on the pitch? Yeah, it's really valuable. You know, there's a young group out there, especially in that back line. So to be able to have, you know, Kate, all Katie's experience from playing, from captain in the World Cup and winning World Cup captain, she brings all of that. But now into that coaching role, she can really nurture and support, you know, those players left and right of her because there is a young squad out there, Ellie Kildun, you know, what maybe her fourth cap this weekend. So, you know, she'll be guiding those, but also focusing focusing on her job as well. Yeah, absolutely. And vice captain today, someone that you know very well as well, Abby Ward, the artist formerly known as Abby Scott. She got married in the summer, that's why we've had a change of name, <laughs> not for any other legal reasons. Um, tell us about her. Yeah, she's a, a complete leader from the front, you know. Abby puts her body on the line and like, England's biggest weapon is that line out and yeah. a lot of that comes down to Abby Ward and her detail around it and working on the units and, and then you've got Katie Day McKean putting them in the right place and then she gets the shot but yeah she's an absolute workhorse and privileged to have her at Harlequins as well so yeah I'm excited to see her play. Red Roses, let's have a look at the state of play. Back to back Grand Slam champions in the Six Nations last week, number one in the world. Um, we're what nine, ten months away from a big tournament next September. You've got to say the squad's in great position right now, aren't they? Uh, yeah, they really are. And I think the, the beauty of Simon being able to look at some different players, has some of the Sevens girls coming back and being involved, and it's as if they've never been away before. So I think it's a really exciting place to be in. Finishing the year this year, they're going to want to put a really good performance playing at Twickenham. Everybody loves playing here, you know. It's the heart and the soul of rugby, and, and I think they want to put on a good display, finish this year, wrap it up. They know they've done really well, and then start focusing into to what is a big year for them next year. Absolutely. We've, we've chatted about quite a lot of them. Who else could you pick out from this squad that we should be looking out for today? Well, I think Poppy Cleal, um, she's one of the toughest competitors and she gets her shot at eight. She's played in the second row, she's played at six and now she gets her shot at eight as well. 
Um, so I'm really excited to see her play. Um, she's, she's a try scorer sensation, isn't she? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if she's going to be ironing up trying to get over that whitewash today. I'll tell you what, the Cleo sisters are a force of nature. Unbelievable, but actually really good dance as well. Uh, <laughs> I remember being in the O2 arena with them, watching Drake, and uh, yeah, they're absolutely outstanding. Tell us about Zoe Harrison as well. She's someone that's able to play in multiple different positions uh, alongside Katie Daly McLean. We can see lots of opportunities fashion from, from those two pairing. Yeah, Zoe's come on really well. I think what I love about the young group, they've got a bit of sass about them. <laughs> and they don't, you know, they don't go along with everything all the time. They bring their own opinions to stuff, and it's really good because it challenges players around. Yeah. And it also, you know, like Helena Rowland and um, um, Zoe Harrison, you know, they try things. The, the, the little bit extra, you know, that Katie might go, oh, do you know what, I'm going to play it safe because yeah. I've been here before, I know how to manage things, whereas sometimes they'll just push that edge. And, and it's great to have that balance of Katie and Zoe at 10 and 12. OK, playing it safe is not a term that I would <laughs> use to describe our guest that we've got on. It's Red Roses, Hannah Bottoman. Hannah, great to see you. Um, <laughs> You're looking marvellous. Hey, um, it's, it's a shame not to uh, see you out on the pitch today, but give us uh, an update on your injury. How are you getting on? Yeah, no, I um, I just had to have an operation on Monday on my ankle. Um, just did it. I was coming back from a, another injury um, and just did it in my first game back. So a bit bit annoying, but um, not the end of the world. And hopefully I'll be back in, in no time. I was, chatting, I was chatting to Rachel. Um, she said that you, you've been milking this injury. Um, you've got a little bell. People bring food to you. You're actually quite enjoying being injured to a yeah. certain degree. And you're literally getting pushed around on your single tricycle. What's that all about? I've actually, I've actually got it here with me, you know. It's, um, it's, it is genuinely, it's a lifesaver. Um, it's just a scooter that I just put my knee on and just do laps with. It's fantastic. Yeah, but you genuinely. haven't even pushed you on it. I've seen it on social. No, 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 no. That was basically the the tyres were a little bit flat, and it was quite a long it was quite a long walk. So I just thought um, I'd need a little a, a hand, so to speak. Fair play. <laughs> uh, we, we've been talking about the forward power of the forward uh, today for the Red Roses. You'd have seen the match out in Grenoble last week. How impressed yeah. were you with the forward pack? Yeah, I think um, in open play we were fairly dominant and, and had some real hard carries. I think would be slightly disappointed. I'm gonna bore everyone with my scrum chat, but um <laughs> scrum wise I don't think I don't think we would have been too happy coming away from that game. So I think it's probably something that we'll be going into this game really trying to fire fire in because we notoriously have um a bit of a nightmare scrummaging against France and I think it's something that we really want to put our foot down and and show that we can actually um scrummage well and scrummage against the best teams in the world. Yeah, obviously we've seen a fair amount of rotation from Simon Middleton um, this season. Um, what do you make of the performances that we've seen from the Red Roses? Yeah, I think the, the performance last week is obviously our, our second game back from from coming back into the internationals. And I think it going away to France is, is always a really difficult fixture to go to. And um, I think coming away with... 20, with a 23 point lead at the end is obviously it's testament to, to the girls and, and they've pulled through at the end so um, I think like the performances have, have been really good I think you've obviously had some some standout players with like Helen and Roland coming in at 10 having having a good game and um, obviously your Abby Wards and and your, your, your forward pack doing doing an outstanding job so it's just building on from performances um, from the last two and, and hopefully they can put on a show for you guys. I get asked this question a lot because I was injured a lot, but how do you keep yourself occupied whilst you're injured? Um, currently, I'm struggling, to be fair. I've got an Xbox, so that's that's where I'm spending most of my time. But for the first week after operations, you nine times out of ten can't really do anything because you're not allowed to sweat. So a um, bit of a nightmare, obviously. But um, yeah, I've just been playing an Xbox. It's are really missing, boring. Are you missing your really gaming cool. crew? Yeah, missing them because obviously Poppy's, well, they're all away. Burner's miles away from me. So, um, yeah, it's just been me, myself and I. Brilliant. Well, Hannah, look after yourself. Um, take care. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that you're injured, but hopefully we'll see you back on the pitch really soon. All the very best. Cheers. Thank you, guys. See you, bots. Thank you.
She came across quite shy and retiring, but that's certainly not the character that I've come across on, on oh, quite a few no. occasions. Yeah, she's a big, loud character. And if you don't um, hear her, then you're definitely seeing her like busting a groove and trying to trying to get the hype up in camp. She's always a really good character to have around and, and be a part of the squad. But obviously, you know, injury does take its toll on people in different ways. Yeah, absolutely. We have, we've not mentioned the French. Um, they'll be hurt from last week, you know, losing on their home patch. We know about the rivalry England and France have. What kind of reaction are you expecting to see today? Well, I think you're right that they're going to want to come out here and they're going to want to do what England did to them on their home turf. Playing France is always really, really physical. Yeah. It's relentless. It's non-stop. But I love how they always try and keep the ball alive. They always want to play. They want to play this Jue. I mean, we joke about it. We're yeah. in, in our own <laughs> training. Like, Jue, just play. Um, but I love that about them. I love their passion and their desire. And, and hopefully, I really want to see a tight competitive game today. I think they've got some good strength on the bench to come off. And Because that's been the problem with the French, you know, First half, they're in it, yeah. right in it, and then second half, the wheels come off and they can't sustain it. So I'm hoping that with some of the bench today that they're going to be able to come on and keep that momentum going. Yeah, fingers crossed. We massively want to see the best of French and want to see the best of the Red Roses today. Um, is there a bit of extra spice in today's occasion? It's one of the last matches before the end of the year and knowing big tournament in New Zealand next September, France and England in the same yeah. pool. We've got more than just points at stake today. We've also got bragging rights. Yeah, bragging rights. Right, you know, that confidence, that psychological side of it, that little edge, you know, England have beaten these guys six times in a row now, so they're going to want to make that seven and finish the end, like end the year on a real high. And then going into next year, feeling quite confident, have that edge over them. And, and France will want to be trying to do the reverse of it as well. So I think we're going to be in for an absolute cracker. Yeah, of course. And all of the action is going to be live on BBC Two. And you can keep up to date of everything right across England rugby social media channels. Um, just another word just on this fixture, because outside of just this 80 minutes, France and the investment and the support that their women get to really amplify the women's game is exceptional. I think it was, was it two years ago at 18 or 19,000 world record for this fixture? I mean, these two powerhouses are so important for the growth of women's rugby, they right? Are, and I think, you know, both teams are leading in the way in terms of everything that they're doing on the pitch. For further, you've got to have the product. You know, they're absolutely two fantastic sides, but the work that they do off, I was in Grenoble those two years ago where, you know, it was over 17,000 people. We just broke the record at the, the World Cup previously. Yeah. So then it's just incredible how much the hometown and the county around whatever stadium they're playing in gets behind the game. And we just need to keep that momentum. And I know we don't have fans now, but the fact of the figures that, you know, um, Oh, nearly a million people watching last week on BBC is, is oh, wow. absolutely brilliant. So, you know, they know that people are watching, so both teams are going to want to put on a massive show today. Yeah, hopefully we get a brilliant performance from our Red Rose. It should be a fascinating contest. And, of course, we've got the men straight after the women, England against Ireland. You can catch the women on BBC Two. But that's it for us for now. Thank you very much, Rachel. And just a reminder, we're going to be talking to Jack Noel, ex the Chiefs finest. Jack Noel is going to be joining us at the end of this. So enjoy the game and we'll see you very soon. Cheers.